Jimmy, please say something. James? What? Who are you? Mom, I thought you told me never to talk to strangers. Like I said before, Jimmy, please be nice to your new stepfather. Okay, rich guy. I love it that you're twice as old as my grandfather and you're fat and bald. Uh. That's enough! I've had it with you, you little brat! You've upset your mother. I've got half a mind to beat you. Half a mind is right. Suddenly he realizes. I can't believe you, you little monster. We'll deal with you when we get back from our honeymoon next year. Boy, bull worth the cattle. Have fun, Jimmy. I'll think of you from our cruise ship. <laughs> Whatever. Bully was one of Rockstar's most controversial games when it came out in 2006, mostly because it was misunderstood by the public. People thought of it as a GTA for kids, and with a name like Bully, they were sure that you were supposed to be the bully, senselessly committing crimes, beating up weaker students and causing havoc. They couldn't have been wronger. Jimmy Hopkins, the protagonist and player character, is actually the new guy at school and, at least in the beginning, the one getting bullied. Throughout the story, Jimmy keeps helping out the weaker students, such as the nerds, and stands up for them and himself against the so-called bullies, jocks and preps, who are just some of the factions in the game, which I will talk about in depth later into the video. Despite the fact that this game was misunderstood, gamers loved it. Until this day, Bully has a cult following and tons of rather niche content creators still talk about it and keep the community alive. The sequel has been highly anticipated for the last 15 years, but sadly, as of now, Rockstar doesn't seem to be interested in creating another passion project like this, as they rather invest resources into cash cows like GTA Online, which is understandable from a business point of view, but nonetheless, the Bully community, me included, does not understand why Rockstar can't find the time or interest for this IP. Especially when people who were involved with the project, such as Gary Rosenthal, Jimmy's voice actor, have stated that they would love to do a sequel. We will just have to hope for a miracle or, at the very least, a good remaster or remake to happen in the future. Just a heads up before we get into the actual story of the game. For this video, I'm not actually playing the original version, which in Europe, by the way, is called Canis Canem Edit, meaning Dog Eat Dog, but I'm playing the Scholarship Edition that was released two years later for the Xbox 360, which is backwards compatible for Xbox One. The reason for that is simple. The Scholarship Edition has more missions, classes and unlockables than the original and, up for discussion, slightly improved visuals. Of course, I did play the original version on the PS2 back in the day and in recent years on the PS4 once again, but there is quite frankly no reason reason to play those versions over this one, considering the content you'd be missing out on. Anyway, let's get into the story. If you have never played the game and don't want to get spoiled, skip to the next timestamp in the video. You play as Jimmy Hopkins, a hard-headed 15-year-old boy who just got dropped off at Bullworth Academy by his mother and new stepdad, because they're going on a cruise and won't be back until summer. Right at the gates, he gets his warm welcome from Miss Danvers, the principal's charming secretary. He makes his way to the principal's office, where he meets Dr. Krabblesnitch for the first time, who makes it clear to him that he should better stay out of trouble. However, Jimmy doesn't seem too impressed. So here I am, at probably the worst school in the country, whose alumni are nothing but arms dealers, serial killers, and corporate lawyers. Real scum. And that old creep thinks he can tame me? We shall see, my friend. I only give people what they have coming to them.
The first student he meets is Gary, who approaches him in the boys dorm and offers to be his friend and show him around. Yeah, he's quite an arrogant fella. It doesn't take long before Jimmy gets to experience the aggressiveness of the bullies, as he has to teach a couple of them a lesson right outside the dorm. The second student who reaches out to Jimmy is Pete, a short, shy dude who seems to get clowned on by Gary all the time but somehow sticks around him. After the acquaintance, Gary introduces Jimmy to all the different cliques that inhabit Bullworth Academy. The nerds, the preps, the greasers and the jocks. This will actually turn out to be some of the the most important information for Jimmy's near future at school. Not long after, Gary actually introduces Jimmy to his plan to take over the school and his manipulating character shines through more and more. I was just telling Petey here about my idea to take over the school. I mean, my plan for us to take over the school. What plan? Don't worry, Jimmy. It's just a little something I came up with. It's sink or swim, my friend. And if you're good at swimming, you gotta let the losers drown. Jimmy starts off running some errands for Gary and getting to know some of the faction's members in the process. The first faction he actually helps out are the nerds who are constantly getting bullied by the jocks. Soon after, Halloween night arrives, where Jimmy and Gary dress up in costumes and go out to play some pranks on other students and teachers. After Halloween, Gary convinces Jimmy to follow him into the school's basement to finally execute his first big step of his plan to take over the school. It is here that Gary reveals his true colors, setting up Jimmy to fight Russell, one of the biggest and strongest bullies at school, in the pit for Jimmy apparently talking smack behind Gary's back, which is obviously a lie. Okay, so what's that got to do with standing up to people, keeping them in line? This is where I stand up to you, my friend. What are you talking about? I know you hate me, Jimmy boy. I know you said all that stuff about me behind my back. What are you talking about? Don't play innocent with me. You want to run this school? I want to run this school. Only one of us is going to make it. And it's going to be me! He lies to Russell as well, just to see him beat up Jimmy, but that doesn't quite turn out the way he anticipated it. The positive of this situation is Russell and the bullies siding with Jimmy, growing his alliance. Soon after the first big event, Jimmy gets approached by a member of the preps, who, having heard about him beating Russell, invites him to come by their boxing gym and show off his skills. An offer which Jimmy follows up on, but as he teams up with the preps, Gary steps in once again and ruins the day by spreading lies about Jimmy insulting Thad, one of the prep members. Now being on their bad side, Jimmy goes to their boxing gym to challenge them in the ring. After beating all of the preps, he makes sure to tell him who's boss, and they actually give him access to their beach safe house. He decides to infiltrate the headquarters to destroy some rap plans for the chemistry teacher. Yeah, don't ask why, Jimmy helps out a couple of teachers throughout the school year and does some questionable things for them. Derby Harrington, the prep leader, doesn't take kindly to that, and he and his goons try to beat up Jimmy, which goes horribly wrong. Long story short, Jimmy tells him who's boss again, and this time the preps seem to accept him as their new leader. Jimmy starts gaining some confidence, showing no interest in Gary anymore. Picked a fight with me, and I showed him who was boss. And Gary got them to pick that fight, so maybe you'll show him as well. Gary's an even bigger problem, he'll have to wait. The next main character Jimmy gets to meet is Johnny Vincent, leader of the Greases, who tells him about his problems with his girlfriend Lola, who apparently is out cheating on Johnny with some prep kid. Jimmy agrees to help Johnny spy them out and lure the preps into a trap. What Jimmy doesn't know is that even Algy, the nerd who's always pissing his pants, is somewhere involved in this and goes on to save him from the Greases, giving himself a bad standing in the process. Jimmy continues to help out the preps provoke the Greases and beats them up for their safe house. After beating Johnny in a race and getting some of Lola's stuff back for her from a Grease Greases hideout, it's time for the big showdown. Jimmy fights Johnny Vincent in a scrapyard, gaining the upper hand with a little help from Pete. After Johnny realizes that with Jimmy he finally found someone who is not interested in stealing Lola, funnily enough he still made out with her though, he gives Jimmy his respect and agrees to back him up. Next up, Jimmy takes on the nerds for being arrogant towards him even though he has helped them in the past. Hey Jimmy! Hey! So what do you say, Algy? Us help you? Yeah, think of everything I've done for you since I got here! You? You're like a bouncer! We're a bit above helping people like you. I mean, get real, duh! Pea stain! Now you need my help. Forget it. He goes on a mission to storm Ernest's observatory. Ernest proves to be a tougher opponent than expected, but of course, Jimmy manhandles him in the end, but offers his help in dealing with the jocks. After beating them in the game of dodgeball, he agrees to help Algy and the other nerds manipulate the carnival's funhouse as the jocks are inside to teach them a lesson. This quickly turns sideways as Fatty and Bucky get trapped in the funhouse with the jocks. Jimmy, of course, as always, has to beat up some people and escort the nerds to safety. The next step in Ernest's plan against the jocks is taking some indecent pictures of the head cheerleader, Man 
Sandy to blackmail the jocks. Jimmy has to infiltrate the girl's dorm and sneak around to get to his goal. As the jocks get wind of this, they storm the observatory, which Jimmy has to help defend. The last step is to manipulate the jocks' football game by playing some pranks on them and sabotaging their material. But first, Jimmy has to get the mascot's costume, so he can do this undercover. After having acquired the costume and sabotaging the game, Jimmy faces off Ted and his teammates in an epic fight on the football field. I don't think I have to tell you how this turns out, do I? That's right, losers! Yeah! Oh, Jimmy, you did it! You did it! I'm king of the school! Oh, you beat them all in front of everybody! Thanks for your help, Petey. Oh, this is gonna be great! Here he is, finally king of the school and loved by everyone. He accomplished everything that Gary ever wanted for himself and it stays that way. That's it, the game's over. Or not? Of course it isn't that easy. Pete is the only one to actually remind Jimmy to watch out for Gary, since an evil, manipulative guy like him can't just disappear and let Jimmy leave his dream, right? Next thing you know, the library is infested with rats, the gym is burning, Johnny Vincent has disappeared and the preps trophies are gone. And who do they all blame? Exactly, Jimmy. He even gets expelled for this. So Jimmy goes on a mission, while suddenly everyone hates him again, to make things right and find out who's behind all of this. That's when he finds out that it's actually the doing of the townies, small time criminals and dropouts who hang around the industrial park of Bullworth. With the help of his old pal Russell and the townie girl Zoe, Jimmy makes his way into the townie stronghold, which is actually a power plant. Yeah, don't ask me. Having fought your way through to the leader, Edgar, and beating him in a showdown, you get to know the reason behind all of this. Can you guess it? Gary said we make them all pay. Wait a second. Gary? That backstabbing two-faced sociopath put you up to this? Ah, I bet he said the two of you would take over the school or some crap. Hey, how'd you know? Because he told me the same garbage. Didn't do me any good either. Come on, you're gonna help me make him pay for his lies. Yeah, it's Gary. Jimmy explains to Edgar that Gary is actually a backstabbing SOB and he agrees to help him take him down. Arriving back at school, Jimmy notices that it's absolute chaos. While he was gone, a war between all factions broke out and now he, Russell and Edgar need to go in and bring the leaders back to their senses. After having done that, Jimmy and Gary have a chase and the final epic face off on the school's roof. The thing is, if I win, you're just another punk! You win, and you'll be sent away even quicker for beating up the head boy! Why'd you do it, Gary? Because I can! Because making little people like you and the morons who run this place eat out of the palm of my hand feels great! But I never did anything to you! You would've if I'd given you the chance! Face it, I'm smarter than you! Oh, congratulations! <laughs> You're smarter than me! You hate everyone and everyone hates you! Genius! The head likes me! I tied him up, turned his dumb school into a battleground, got kids expelled, unfairly, put several others into therapy, and he still likes me! You're such a loser! <laughs> well, at least my mom doesn't make her living on her back! You're dead! <laughs> They crash into the principal's office where Dr. Krabble Snitch tells Jimmy that he heard everything. I don't know how he did, but yeah, he did. And once Gary expelled, apologizing to Jimmy. Happy ending. Of course, there are many side missions throughout the story, which would simply be too much for this video, and that way, if you haven't experienced the game yet, you can check them out for yourself, since they actually make up pretty much half of the story and the fun. Go play now. Before talking about the actual content, side missions and activities, we have to talk about the map of the game. Bullwolf is very well done, it's a small town that feels big, which is achieved by making every area memorable and filled with stuff to do. You never get bored of Bullwolf. It looks pretty, it has charm, it's diverse and you just feel right at home. Another positive of the map being limited to the size you actually need, instead of trying to have a gigantic open world, is that you get to know your way around very quickly and you will easily memorize the layout for years. So what is there to do in Bullwolf? In town there are two types of jobs for you to do, which you can repeat however often you want after completion. Lawn mowing and paper route. They pretty much explain themselves. For the sake of this video I completed all six lawn mowing and all five paper route levels. There are also errands, which are somewhat random encounters where people ask you to do something for them and the reward is usually cash or sometimes an unlockable clothing item. On school ground there are two activities. Penalty shot and keep up, which can earn you some small cash. Then you have the cart and bike races. The cart races start off at the carnival and after you complete the five stages you can actually do three more races in town to unlock the go kart, which is probably the fastest vehicle you can use in the game. The bike races are spread all over town and frankly there are a lot. The funny thing is, although you are given a bike by default, you can actually drive to the location with any bike, including the moped, and you will start the race on your current vehicle as it starts. I would really advise you to do that since repeatedly pressing A to pedal for 14 races straight will fry 
by your thumb. There is also an exploit that can be used for the paper route job. Just park your moped or any fast bike at the starting location and switch to it as the job starts. At the carnival there are a couple of different mini games which earn you tickets to use in the carnival shop where you can also unlock the moped, which I just talked about, for your garage. There are also a couple of attractions and rides but they don't really do anything except count towards completion. And of course, with this being a Rockstar game, there are arcades. Getting the high score for Consumo, Nutshot and Monkey Fling is required for 100% completion, but except for Consumo, I just couldn't be asked to grind those boring ass games out. Sorry. There are a couple more activities that are left out, which aren't all that important and you actually encounter during story missions anyway. Then you have your classes, of course, which actually progress nicely, and by the time you complete the story, you should have easily completed all of them. That is, if you haven't been ignoring them, of course. Which you really shouldn't, since almost every stage gives you a nice bonus that comes in handy while doing missions. You could also just grind them out right at the beginning before you even start doing story missions, but in my opinion doing them progressively is the way to go, especially from a role playing point of view. Just a little tip, I suggest you to just go ahead and cheat for the English, math and geography classes, just like I know you did in real life. The words for English just seem random as hell, especially if English isn't your first language, as is for me, because if you actually want to find them all by yourself you're probably going to take way too long to pass in the later class. As for math, time is just way too tight to actually think about all your answers. And geography, well, it kind of explains itself. You're going to have to mark a good amount of countries on the map before time runs out. So if you aren't the geography buff, your best bet is to just google the answers. For the other classes, they're all easily passable on your own, even though the bike shop course can be a little annoying sometimes, because you have to put in quick time events that also require you to spin your analog sticks in a particular direction, but detection for this can be horrendous and fail you the class even though you've given the right input. Uh, yeah, you can do some safe scumming right there. Chemistry is also just a QTE minigame. Music is, of course, a rhythm-based QTE minigame. Art, biology and photography are a little more unique, but my favorite of them all is, you guessed it, PE. This one is called Gym in the Game and you can actually learn new fight moves during wrestling and for the rest, play dodgeball, which is a nice, although easily exploitable minigame. If you get caught doing illegal activities on school ground, prefects will bust you and send you to the principal's office. If you repeatedly get caught, you will actually get sent to detention where you will have to mow lawn in summer or shovel snow in winter. Yeah I forgot to capture footage for shoveling snow in winter but uh, here's some lawn mowing for you. If you cause havoc in town police will actually chase you down and bring you to the police station or drag you back to school if you're out past curfew. Watch out not to fall asleep outside because you might wake up with some of your stuff or your shoes stolen. By the way students from cliques that you have 100% respect from will actually help you out should you get into a fight with a prefect. Then last but least you have your collectibles. Rubber bands, G and G cards. Yeah, it's like D and D, but grottos and gremlins, if I remember correctly. Uh, and gnomes are the main ones. Pumpkins and tombstones are limited to Halloween night, but can actually be found later in the game, all in one. Well, two spots. So I would recommend you to just get them afterwards and not waste your time searching for them. You also have transistors that you can give to the homeless guy that lives on campus for him to teach you new fight moves, and the yearbook photos you can take with your camera to unlock the Black Ninja outfit, which makes it way easier to sneak around and stay up after curfew because it makes you nearly invisible to authorities. I'm not going to spoil what you get for finding each respective collectible, but the rewards are quite decent compared to other games, and they're not too hard to find, especially if you have completed geography class, which marks them all on your map. Well, I guess I can show you the cutscene for finding all transistors and bringing them to the hobo. Gotta go mess with my project! <laughs> Take this! Yeah, well, that should normally look like he's being abducted by aliens, but I think me finishing this activity in daylight made the cutscene bug out. There is also a nice, subtle sense of progression in this game. As you complete story missions, side quests and other challenges, you actually collect trophies in your room. Anyway, Bullwolf is full of hidden easter egg stuff like this, which usually unlocks some clothing too, so just go ahead and explore for yourself. Let's talk about the gameplay itself for a minute. Well, 
mechanics and all that type of stuff, you know. To put it simply, the controls are somewhere between San Andreas and GTA 4. Making this statement, I'm assuming that at least 99% of people who watch a bully video on YouTube have at least played one of those two GTA titles, of course. You have your typical sprinting, sneaking and climbing mechanics and controlling Jimmy usually feels decently responsive. You can actually swim too, but it isn't often made use of. The game also features slightly improved combat mechanics and aiming controls, but the combat is actually a lot more in-depth than the GTA series. As stated before, you can learn multiple new moves and you can choose to tap or hold the attack buttons for stronger attacks, ram into people who grab them and even perform takedowns and different ground and pound punches and kicks, which makes for a nice variety of combos and provides a fresh change to the typical old GTA combat. Another big change and in my opinion improvement over the prior GTA titles is the social interaction. You can give people positive or negative remarks, intimidate them, shove them and even bully them, if you wish to do so. This social interaction feature is also used to flirt with people and kiss them, which gives you a health boost. Oh yeah, and you can give people wedgies or grab their ass. I guess. Depending on which classes you have completed, the options and effectiveness for this actually expand and offer you a decent variety of actions and reactions. Red Dead Redemption 2 actually built up on this. Furthermore, you can grab people and push them into lockers and trash cans or even let them taste some toilet water. The choice is yours. I could keep talking about small details like starting food or snowball fights, putting kick me signs on people's backs and making them get the shit kicked out of them, or baiting them with a fireworks show and getting them blown up, or just blowing up toilets because why not? Since these things are all over this game, but it would probably take way too long to point out each one of them so let's just jump to the driving mechanics. As for them, the controls for the bike are pretty much the same as San Andreas, maybe a little less clunky, and since you can't drive cars, it pretty much stays at that. The closest thing to car you're gonna get is the unlockable card from the go-kart races, and its controls are very basic and don't have much weight to them. Same goes for the moped you can buy with tickets from the carnival. One cool thing you can do though is skitching cars when riding your skateboard, which means grabbing onto the back of a car and letting it pull you. You probably won't be using this mechanic all too often, but it's at least a nice little detail. To sum up this category, I'm pretty sure most of you know what an older Rockstar game plays like and how it feels, so it's pretty much what you would expect with some minor adaptations and changes to it. Let's talk about some music. The soundtrack. Honestly, there isn't much to say about the soundtrack, except that it's freaking fantastic. Every single song just gives off this particular vibe that is quite hard to describe. It walks the line perfectly between being serious and comedic. It makes you feel like the world you're experiencing is dark and realistic, but just not quite, if you know what I mean. It's a Rockstar game, so obviously this is what they are known for, making dark games that are humorous and satirical, but this soundtrack is by far the best of any of their games in my opinion. Each track just sticks with you after you play played the game at least once and every single time you hear it afterwards you get nostalgic and just want to dive back into Bullworth and see what there is to find even though you know exactly what there is to find. The soundtrack underlines the tone of the game perfectly and makes chases and sneaking feel intense, fighting badass and exploring at night just a little bit eerie. It has something calming about it but keeps you on edge just as much. Each faction even has their own fighting music which fits them perfectly. Have a listen. All in all, all I can say is that the Bully soundtrack is a masterwork from composer Sean Lee and I will never not love hearing that intro song start playing when I decide to once again replay the game after a couple of years. So here we are, at the end of my first video essay. I don't know how many people actually made it to this point, but I thank you all very much and I hope you enjoyed the experience. If you did, a like and a sub would be greatly appreciated. Anyways, I'm going to create a lot more content like this for you guys, especially of older games which I really liked back in the day and think a lot more people should know about and get into, especially the younger people who didn't get the chance to experience these games when they initially came out. If even one person decides to try out some of these games or play them again after many years because of my videos, that would make me happy. Well, anyway, that was it from me. Have a great day and I hope to see you guys for the next video on Chaotic Good Gaming.